let's have it. Must have skills number seven. This one is gonna be way at the top of the list, way at the top. I'm gonna start off by telling you a story. This is a true story. It was recently told to me by a female student. So she's a young girl, small in stature, uh, in college studying nursing. And this just happened recently. So she went to the gym after school, and then after the gym, she was gonna walk to the local grocery store, purchase some uh, items for supper, et cetera, and go on home, relax and study. Well, as she's walking, and mind you, she's not on her phone, because I asked these questions, she doesn't have earbuds in, she's alert. She knows she lives in the city of Chicago, she's paying attention, but this is a nice neighborhood. And as she's walking on a sidewalk on the right-hand side of the street, so traffic is to her left, she notices a gentleman about six foot two. I'm not gonna call him a gentleman, I take that back. She noticed a man, six foot two-ish was her uh, uh, estimation, several hundred pounds. He is across two lanes on the other sidewalk. She notices him take notice of her. That's a clue. He then crosses the street. She sees him cross the street on an angle coming towards her, where she then loses sight of him beyond her periphery, and she thinks that he continues on behind her the direction she came on the same side of the street. What she didn't realize, we'll assume this is her for a moment, he came walking from across the street. She thought that he continued on in this direction beyond her. What she didn't know is that all of a sudden he J-hooked and came up right behind her and grabbed her. And said in her ear, I love when pretty little white girls get scared and call the cops. Are you gonna get scared and call the cops? I want you to get scared and call the cops. She said she was so numb with fear she couldn't think to do anything except ask, what did you say? because she was so amazed what was happening, just couldn't believe that a man was able to approach her like this in daylight, put his hands on her and say what he did. He then proceeded to tell her, if you tell anybody, I'll come to your house, I'll rape and I'll kill you. She said her whole body went numb. She thought she was gonna collapse, but she forced herself to get back to her apartment where she trembled in fear for some time and was afraid to even leave. We'll stop the story there. So I like to say awareness is the currency with which we buy time to act. It's money, it's currency. The problem with money is you can use it to do good things, you can invest it, you can retire, and you can squander it. So she paid attention. The problem was she didn't pay attention to the right things and did not have an action predetermined in her head for when her awareness took in certain information. The long and the short of it is, we can be aware of all kinds of things, but if we're not aware in the right way, what does it matter? You know what I'm saying? So if we pay attention to everything in the world, if we don't have an appropriate response, like the fact that I just pulled this knife out of my pocket while I was talking to you and turn and stuck it in our bag, what good is being aware of it? You could be aware of me taking this knife out and sticking it in your guts, but if you don't have a predetermined plan on how to deal with it, awareness is for nothing. You could be aware of a truck running you over. You could be aware of a pack of wolves tearing you limb from limb. You could be aware of somebody holding you down and taking what you don't want to give from them. You could be aware of somebody chopping you limb from limb with an ax. Do I need to say more? Awareness needs to be coupled with predetermined plans of action. So, number seven, learn to be aware, but ensure that you couple awareness with plans of action. Well, Mick, what are those plans of action? Those plans of action are different in, in every way, shape, or form for every person. Do you live in Alaska in the bush? Your awareness is gonna be a lot different than somebody living in the inner city of Chicago, New York, Philadelphia, or the like. Are you a five foot tall female college student with less physical ability than a six foot man with big muscles? Do you have children with you? Do you see what I'm saying? There are so many various plans, but here's the thing that you have to, to predetermine. I'm not gonna let somebody get close enough to touch me. I've got a buddy that says, if you can touch me, you can hurt me. And that's a fact. If you can touch me, you can hurt me. And we're talking about hands, edged weapons, blunt weapons. Of course, you could be 100 yards away and shoot somebody even with a pistol. That's not what we're talking about. 
Also, your predetermined plans are gonna be based upon your skill level. My friend Z Durham, instructor Z, or my friend Paul Sharp, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belts, men that have, have had much physical confrontation, their level of skill dealing with average street thug is gonna be completely different than average Joe that's not a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt that hasn't put gloves on or been in physical altercations many times. Do you see my point? So your level of training has to be dictated on, or re let me rephrase that, your level of, of response has to be dictated by your level of training, by the surroundings that you're in, by who's with you in your care and custody. Are you in a place where weapons are allowed or not allowed? You can't always say, I'm gonna draw my gun and shoot them. What if you're in the airport? What if you're in a country where you're not allowed to have a gun or a place? where you're not allowed to have a gun. Well, I carry everywhere. Do you carry into a federal courthouse? Do you carry into the airport like I just stated? Do you carry when you're on vacation in other countries? Of course you don't. So let's just drop that bullshit right out of the gate. Learn to be aware and pay attention, but awareness on its own is completely futile. Awareness on its own is the Library of Congress. It is meaningless information until you apply that information. In that, I will say, knowledge is not power. Knowledge is potential power until it is coupled with some plan of action, and then that plan of action is put into action. Do you understand? Because you can be aware of somebody sticking a knife in your gut. Mickey with CarryTrainer.com. Think about what you're doing. Tell somebody you love them, and please do this for me. If you have young people in your life, uh, male or female, Teach them these things. If you have young females in your life, it is incumbent upon you to teach them to be aware, to not allow men into their physical space, and I will end with this. No gentleman will ever put a young lady in a position where she is fearful of her life or her well-being. No gentleman will ever put a young lady in fear for her life or her well-being. As such, if you are a young woman or a young woman that is in your care and control, uh, as a daughter and niece, et cetera, tells you that they feel that way, that is a problem. They need to develop plans of action to deal with that. It is incumbent upon you to teach them. Be well. Ha ha ha!